Welcome back, everyone, to Let's Play Hotline Miami as we continue on as the biker. Let's get to the, what was it? The blue dragon? Let's get to the blue dragon. Figure out what the fuck is going on. So, in stark contrast to Jacket's play style, the biker has got his cleaver and three throwing knives. Okay, got it. You cannot pick up weapons. You can only recover knives that have been... You can only recover knives that have been thrown into the wall. This is gonna be rough. Damn! God damn it. There's a little mask hiding over here. Can't pick it up yet. Damn it. Look here, punk. I've got some things I need to know, so you better answer my questions, okay? Who are the people who keep leaving me messages and don't even think about bullshitting me, okay? I won't hesitate to pull you apart if I have to. I'll tell you what I know, just don't hurt me. I can tell I can't tell you who's calling the shots, but they're using phone home to sweep up their trails. I only helped them set it up at the station. You'll have to hack into their system to trace them. I went into hiding as soon as the job was finished. They seemed to have some form of political agenda. Scared the shit out of me. I spent all my savings on this rat hole. That's all I've got. Alright, alright. Satisfied. Charlie? Let's go on the bike and let's get out of here. So, once again, in stark contrast to Jacket, Jacket is flexible. The biker is not. Rick and blah, Charlie. May 16th. As you can see, the biker is also tech savvy. Skateboard. You have one new message. Hello, it's Mark from Miami Drop Off. Looks like you missed your delivery last night. We've got another parcel for you today. Please drop it off at Southwest 107th Place. Our clients will not tolerate further delays. Click. Also, like, his apartment is much better furnished. Let's get on the bike and do that murder thing. Biker's distinct lack of ranged combat capabilities will uh, make levels problematic. Ow. Okay. Yeah, I know, it's not impressive, but crap, 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 don't want to stand there. There are guys with guns over there. Come on. Come and get me. Damn it. Dogs, dude. Fucking dogs. Also, as you can tell, the biker moves fucking fast. Jesus. He's really quick. And that's good. Because he needs to be. Can I, can I, I can't get that knife. Lost. Lost for the ages. Hope I don't need it. Doge. Oh crap. Oh, that worked out in my favor. Nice. Later, man. Let's get out of here. And go to car has been changed with go to bike. That's a thing. Like, Jacket? We don't know a lot about Jacket. Brandon! Sweet. 
Also, J the biker is much more social than Jacket ever was. He's got a lady over, he's got a guy he's passed down on his couch, remnants of a party. Hi, it's Jane. It was nice to see you again. How about another date tonight? Pick me up around at Northeast 158th Street around 9, okay? And put on one of those nice suits you've got. You're taking me somewhere fancy this evening. Also, you'll note that uh, the biker doesn't wear the masks. He's got a prank call. He's got a he's got a motorcycle helmet and he's willing to wear it. What's up? Welcome from the phone home building. Look familiar? Out of my way. You can opt not to kill these people, but we're the biker. We're obviously morally reprehensible. Stay away from me. Security. Security. Look, sir, please don't kill me. Please, I'll do anything. Don't care. I'm busy. Interesting. North 87th place, huh? So that's where you've been hiding. Oh. Hey. It's Jacket. Get out of here if you don't want to die. Fine, have it your way. You had your chance. <laughs> Jacket's been dealt with. Just as mortal as anyone else. Gotta break the glass. <laughs> Later, Jacket. Ugh. Gotta say, feels really weird killing Jacket. Just, you know, I played with I played as him for 16 chapters. We're tight, we're close. Hi, it's Ben from Miami Funeral Parlor. I'm just calling to tell you we have the tombstone you ordered done and ready to be delivered. With a little luck, you should be getting it before the weekend. Eep. Not the biker cares. He knows where these guys live. Resolution. What the? That smirking janitor. No. All right, let me let me fuck with this computer here. What's this? Looks like I need a password to access this computer. Fuck. You're kidding me. Pick a question to ask. Um, what's going on down here? We're playing a game, aren't we? And you're one of our pawns, aren't you? I guess this means game over. Who are you working for? You're the phone guys. Who are you working for? No one! <laughs> We're independent! We did it all ourselves! Hard to believe, isn't it? Why are you doing this? We were bored, that's why. Why would we need to justify our actions? You've done far worse things than we have, haven't you? Besides, do you know how much money we're making? We haven't killed anyone. You have. They were all scum anyway, weren't they? You think they deserve to live, do you? That's it? <laughs> you seem disappointed. What were you expecting? I think we're through with your questions. Yeah, your move, creep. Uh, so, these guys are supposed to represent uh, Jonathan Soderstrom and uh, Dennis Whedon, the guys who made the game. Uh, as such, I will murder them for wasting my goddamn time. Let's get the fuck out of here. So that's that. That's Hotline Miami. These are the answers that we wanted. These are the answers we came for. Let's get out of here. But wait, it's not over yet. Louie. No, no, no. There's resolution. There's resolution. No need to start with the intro. So, we've been collecting all these puzzle pieces. It's time to finally put them to use. Go in the options menu, you can see the puzzle. Look at all this junk. I'll just tell you what the puzzle is. I was born I'm just so scared that I'm gonna like run out of letters and I didn't actually pick them all up. You 
S A. Let's try using the computer now. What's this? Looks like I need a password. Let's try something. Ah, there we go. I see. So that's your game, huh? What is it? Don't leave me in the suspense here, biker. So this is your base of operations, huh? Infiltrating the enemy. How clever of you. You're the asshole from phone home last night. What do you want? I looked through your computer upstairs, and I thought we should have a little talk about your line of work. You don't know shit. Our system's password protected. No one knows the password but the two of us. I was born in the USA. How the hell did you figure that out? As you'll notice, they're not smirking anymore. They're dead fucking serious. Let's just say I used a little magic. So let me get this straight. You're nationalist scumbags. You threaten your members into doing your dirty work, and this whole thing is a two-man operation? You could say that. That we like to call ourselves patriots. We volunteered to conduct this little experiment by ourselves. But I can assure you we're just the tip of the iceberg. We're setting up operations all over the country. How'd you come up with this crazy scheme? Crazy? What you need to realize is that all you gotta do to get people to do what you want them to is to make them think there will be a consequence if they don't. It's a principle our whole society is built upon. So it's okay to threaten people into killing each other. Wake up, man. Don't you see this is a country at war? 50 blessings is a foundation for patriots. Our members must fill out a form in which they state that they're willing to die for the sake of our nation. You might remember this. You remember too, right? you expect me to topple the Russo-American coalition using methods like this? Oh, don't you worry about that. We'll have this country back on its feet soon enough. Give us five years and you'll see what we're capable of. This is just the first step. You'll understand in time. We've got, we've got some very powerful people on our side. You know what? I think I've heard enough. I've got no interest in politics. The people have already waited a long time. And they die again. So... That's what's going on. Relation... Th th that's what it is. It's all political. Relations between Russia and America in this, in this, in this version of Earth are stretched, stretched to the limits. Stretched thin. Very, very dangerous. As such, um... There are those who would prefer that open war would be going on and these janitors are part of an organization devoted to that as such they just threatened people into doing what they wanted them to and as soon as one person started doing it they had a hitman to kill anyone who didn't get in on it so yeah unfortunately we killed this guy earlier in the game uh the 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 cannon in which jacket defeats the biker is 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 the cannon they go with into the second game so as such the madness is still going on the janitors are still alive and no one knows no one knows anything about the malicious nature of 50 blessings whatsoever because we fucking killed this asshole it's a mixed bag it's a really big mixed bag of emotions because like the, the 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 biker is a total fucking scumbag. He's an absolute goddamn sleazeball. But I guess it takes a sleazeball like him to ask some questions, to be willing to get to the bottom of things, to put everything on the line in order to figure out what the fuck is going on instead of blindly following orders. I mean, he is a biker. He's probably a rebel by nature. And once he figured out he was working for a system, he wanted to figure out what the fuck it was about. I don't know. It's hard to tell. It's hard to get. It's hard to get a good, uh, a good read on the biker. We don't spend a lot of time with him. We've only got three chapters, and we don't have a lot of dialogue. We just have enough to know that he's a total fucking mass murdering asshole. So that, with that, Hotline Miami comes to its end. Um, but, but we gotta figure out what happened. In, in the wake of Jacket's crimes, we got to figure out what happens in Hotline Miami 2. Someday, maybe tomorrow, we will come.
to the world of Hotline Miami 2, the world that Jacket built. The world where 50 blessings endures. Thank you for playing. Thank you for bringing me this game. Denaton Games, Dennis Whedon, Jonathan Soderstrom, the guys who made the music. Beautiful, beautiful soundtrack. The guys who tested it. Everything. Everybody gets a giant thank you from me. Good night, everyone. <laughs>